Hello everyone, before the interview starts, I just wanted to quickly apologize for all the audio errors that was happening throughout the whole interview. I try to fix as much as I can. I hope that the second time around, I do a lot better. I know me and Corey had a lot of fun recording this interview and we definitely want to do another one in the future. But anyways, I won't take any more of your time and let's get started with the interview. Piero. Uh, today I'll be talking to good friend Corey Lovett. He is a painter, a scholar. Uh, <laughs> scholar. Yeah. <laughs> Talented black king. <laughs> young I'm young black king. Let's say, go ahead. Young short black uh, king. <laughs> don't do this. Don't do this. <laughs> I mean, what else would you add to that list of titles? Good person. I wouldn't, uh, thank you. I wouldn't necessarily <laughs> say I'm a multi- some people would consider me a multidisciplinary artist. I wouldn't say that. Uh, just calling you a painter, like, good enough? Or, like, would you say that you do more than just painting? Uh, I definitely do more than just painting. Um, although, like, I just tell people I paint. Uh, yeah. I definitely want to do, like, more stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like it's just, like, the easiest <laughs> the easiest thing to tell people. Because I'm like, oh, I do this, this, this. Or I want to do this, this, this. So, True. Yeah. yeah. I like to paint. It's like, yeah, I like to paint. I wanted to start off by like asking you, like, what's like your morning routine? Because I feel like like it's having a good morning routine that sets your energy is for the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. I was talking to one of my roommates about that. Um, I've developed a new morning routine, like because of this quarantine stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and it's become a lot more effective. Like, but I notice it's like if I don't. If I don't start, if I don't follow the routine, it's like the rest of the day is just chaos yeah. or like just unorganized until I like fix it, you know? Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Um, but my morning routine, I'll like wake up, um, you know, daily washing or whatever. Uh, I try to eat something light because I've been having these like watercolor sessions. Yeah, that's what I call them now, like watercolor sessions. I don't know. I've really been. I really like watercolor. Like, I don't. I don't know. I don't. I I like the medium now. I I really couldn't stand it at first because uh, you can't really control it. But put on my tea. You know what I'm saying? Got my music. I do eat oatmeal, but I eat those oatmeal bars. You were talking about that earlier. Oatmeal bars. So good. Yes. Like, like granola bars. Yeah, like these, like cinnamon. Like they're so good. It's uh -huh. so good. It's like soft and chewy bars. But anyway, you know what I'm saying? Have me something light. Put on my tea, green tea. Um, I got this little spot like right next to my window. And, like the sunlight comes in. Yeah. I don't know. It's like that that lighting you just can't get like in any other part of the day. And I do a little watercolor sketch. Or I'll, sometimes it, it, it lasts longer than that, you know. But just like really relaxing. Uh, so you try to do like something like in terms of art related like something quick in the morning or like you do you ever like work on like a bigger piece in the morning as well uh i would say it's messy. i would say it's definitely something something quick yeah um i got the idea from our friend ruth okay uh, ruth and she's like i'm like how do you stay so productive yeah like you know what i'm saying like she's always on it and she was like a lot of it has to do with like what she does when she wakes up Cause a lot of the sketches for that stuff that she does, it happens in the morning. Oh she, really? Yeah, when she wakes up uh -huh. and like you know she does a little wash up or whatever, brush her teeth, the sketches happen. Mm -hmm. Like she crank out like ten of them. So yeah, it's just like just like a warm up, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I, I just rather not like if I'm gonna take on something heavy, it's weird. Like usually it happens like at night for me, like really late for some reason. Like yeah. that's when I'm like. Working on the heavy stuff. Um, Would you consider yourself like a morning person or a night person? You know, I'm still trying to figure that out, but I, definitely night, definitely night. No, really? Take, take that back. Yeah, definitely a night person. For some reason, that's when I get a lot of my good ideas. Um, maybe. Well, like, well, like what's sorry, I didn't mean to cut you. But like, yeah. what's like, what time do you usually like wake up, and what time do you usually go to sleep? Um. 
well, things have definitely changed. Like again, because of this, you know, this pandemic or whatever. Um, so now I try to wake up around like six. Around like six, I shoot for five. But Damn. I usually never, <laughs> never want to get up. When yeah. First alarm hit, so it's it's it's, it's six around mm-hmm. six six ten or something like that. Um, and by the time I'm done fixing everything, you know, getting the tea ready and all of that, by the time I sit down, it's like six thirty, six forty five. And I'm going in with my little painting session for about an hour, hour or two. So, yeah, I, I shoot for five. You know, I've been trying to, like, get the most out of my day. You, see, you ever notice, like, it isn't until you, like, make a to-do list or try to get stuff done, you notice, like, how much time you don't have? Yeah. Like Things go by faster. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I've noticed that about you. You always have, like, a list of everything. I right? do. Or you do write do down I, a lot of things. I have it on me? Uh. I don't the little notepad. Yeah, I um, I don't have it on. Yes, I do. Um, but for me, it isn't just a to do list. It's it's a. It's how I. What's the word I'm looking for? It's almost like a documentation of my life mm. in a weird way, because it's like I I'm on my third book now. Like, oh, uh, you, so you keep all the books. I, I collect oh, okay. them. Um, I had four, but I lost the first one. Uh, that one had like the to do list, you know, back in the back in the days when we were like, uh, we had the dates for the events that we were going to. Oh wow! Um, so that one had that, but I don't know what happened to it. I think it was like in in that old car that I had back home, but um, oh. but I, I still got two. I'm on the third one now, and um, yeah, like I write the things that I need to get done for the day, mm. and then I have just like my major goals like you know for the month mm-hmm. um, but it's like when i flip back i can remember all the stuff that i was going through at the time all the stuff i was trying to shoot for so it's dope um you keep doing it do you feel like you're still shooting for the same things that you were even back then no no it's it's weird i feel like i change it, it's i feel like my reality and my perception of a lot of things change like almost every month not completely yeah but my outlook on it um like a lot of a lot of my larger goals they're still the same yeah but i'm thinking i guess like the way i'm going about accomplishing them those have changed Mm -hmm. so are you more like independent or um you try to do things with other people i say it's more of a combination of the two uh Cause I feel like you should you should always have uh, a certain craft or something that you're doing that just you like to do or you enjoy with yourself you know? mm, and Could have you, full control. Yeah, yeah. Could you find out things about yourself um, in those moments. You get good ideas, you know. Because uh, like I don't I don't like I don't really like painting around a whole bunch of people. I, I like painting alone. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to like designing or or even doing something like you know with the movements that's going on right now like mm. um it's nice to have other people you know like with the movements and protests and things like that going on it's more of like a togetherness that has to happen you know yeah so yeah that that's one way my <clears throat> my goals have changed and like uh making sure like whatever i whatever the destination is like part of that is like with other people so like I know that we've known each other for like almost like a decade now, like since middle school, and I never got to ask you like what piece of artwork that that attracted you to doing art. When you say, when you say doing art, like mm. doing art in general, the first piece that really really got me really into it mm. um, was a painting that my father did. I used to go with him over the summer. When I was younger, like, you know, Zim and my mom wasn't together. So every summer I, you know, spend the summers with him. Um, and he did this painting of um it was like it was like this, this like kitsch like painting. I'm pretty sure a bunch of other artists have done it, but um I thought it was like dope at the time. But he did this painting of like God's hand holding uh Jesus and looking at earth and <laughs> oh wow looking back on it now you know i'm like at, at the time i was just super amazed yeah but i it was that and he also painted on jeans uh-huh. um, 
And I don't know. I was just like, I think I was amazed at the fact that he could do that and no, almost no one else in our family could do that. Mm. Um, he was the only like artist in the family. There, there were a few others, but he was like the main artist. Uh-huh. Like, um, but I think that just, I don't know. Um, just like really inspiring. Mm. That's what really, really got me like caught. Like, I'm like, damn. Like, like did you ever watch your dad? Like while he's working on his on jeans or canvas? No. No. Isn't that crazy? No. I just <laughs> I I never thought of that. I've never seen my dad paint. Uh-huh. I've only seen the after effects of it. It's like Has he um, ever tried has he, has he ever tried to teach you how to paint? We've sat down and tried to do some things. I remember we sat down and like watched the Bob Ross video oh, okay. to some clouds and stuff. <laughs> no, I'm like um but nothing like serious serious yeah um that's crazy like i've never thought about that i i've never seen him actually paint i've only Mm. seen like the the effects of like you know or or like the after Mm. because he stopped he did he he stopped Um, he stopped like before you were born or like after yeah it was before i was born Uh um i got like these uh i got little scraps um, like cut out cartoons from the jeans that he painted on. Mm. He gave those to me. Um, I yeah, never had any of his paintings though. But yeah, mm. but um, yeah. Um, the other thing I was gonna say is like I say that's when I initially first got into art. But I feel like I wasn't. I don't feel like I was making the art that I wanted to. That, that I was meant to make mm. until uh, until a couple of years ago. Yeah. Um, like that incident I told you when I was in class. Um, and one of Which my incident? Teachers, uh, one of my teachers at the time, I was at, I was in Broward uh, at, like, at the community college. And he, uh, he sat us down and we watched this interview. Not interview. What, what's the word I'm looking for? It was a movie. It was the documentary. Four, yeah, like the Fourteenth Amendment, I think, by Ava DuVernay, or is it the? I don't want to butcher it. I don't but know. It was basically a documentary yeah. um, about like the prison systems and things like that. Oh, Thirteenth Amendment. Yeah. Thirteen. Yeah, it's on Netflix. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta forgive me for butchering that. If you're <laughs> listening, but um, basically, um, in that documentary, they tell the story of Khalif Bowder. And I don't know, the story just really, really set me off. Like, because I felt uh-huh. like it could have been me, you know? Yeah. And before that, I was making like, I don't know, just like stuff with, because I don't want to offend anyone. Just me personally, I felt like I was making stuff that just really didn't mean much. Yeah. If, in, if anything, I just like wanted to sell it or, mm. you know, um, wanted to get likes on Instagram. But it's like hearing, what he went through i was just like no way there's no way i'm making this and someone else is going through this and yeah I, you know so um i think that's when my art career just took like a 360 mm-hmm. and that's when i started uh painting the stuff that i feel like i was meant to paint i, f- I feel like in terms of like everyone's art career eventually like you find like your own i guess like purpose and what mm-hmm. it is that you want to do with your art Mm. and because like at first like when we both went to you know middle school and high school they just showed us like the techniques or like the basics right but i guess later on when you're in college and stuff then you then you learn how to incorporate those techniques with your message right and you know hopefully that comes down to like a masterpiece which honestly like looking at what you've been like the like your progression I guess mm-hmm. all of our progressions, like, it's mm-hmm. been r- really nice to see. Mm-hmm. Um, True. It's, it's interesting you say that, though. It's like, like, it's like, okay, like, you're right. High school, they show us, like, techniques and things like that that we can use. Because a lot of it really is technique and skill. Mm-hmm. You know, the AP portfolio exams and things like that. But I feel like even when you get into college, they're still just showing you techniques. Yeah. I just think it's because... Art, you know, art. We're getting older in age. We're experiencing 
so many other things mm-hmm. that by that time, like whatever we learned or we're learning, like it's developed mm-hmm. and um that those things that we've experienced or are experiencing, we're better learning how to uh portray them, like in whatever medium that we're using. You know? Yeah. Cause there there's some people who they're so good, like uh skill wise, um, like really good, but they just like creativity wise or uh yeah, exactly. I just, I, I, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. Like they know how to do like a picture perfect yeah. uh drawing or such, but like the subject matter is just it could be like a still life or like ordinary things. Right. Exactly. Which isn't like I guess entirely bad because like you know the skill is like really good, but exactly. I guess I guess there's different crowds for each thing because mm-hmm. like like we we we've, we've been to like many galleries and museums and like the the little shows in Miami like we see everyone has like like the artists right next to each other is like completely different, but mm-hmm. they're both good in their own way. Like exactly, that's mm-hmm. true. I um. I just feel like a lot of people can relate to the thought process that I like ran into, you know, before I came up here. I mean, yeah, it was it was way before I came up here. It happened back home. It was like, you know, do I want to be a painter or do I want to be an artist? Uh, Because you, you can make a you can make a nice painting, you know, mm-hmm. but can you make a painting that like has an impact on people or, or yeah. says something, you know, I feel like only an artist can do that yeah you know? and that's something you're more focused on right like the bigger yeah. impact yeah mm-hmm. exactly i guess i guess it's like a cliche thing to, to ask but like you know with what's been going on like has mm-hmm. that fueled you more into mm-hmm. doing more of an impact with your work yeah. um if if anything it's um the work that i was doing i kind of feel like it was like already like it wasn't on the exact topics or themes that's going on right now with mm. the, with the protests and the Black Lives Matter Black Lives Matter movements. Um, I did focus on like certain issues that I felt like were going on like within the Black community or certain things that were like hindering Black people. Um, I feel like if anything, it's uh the things that are going on have affected the amount of information that I'm seeking out to 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 take in. Like mm-hmm. I'm educating myself a lot more now. Yeah. You know? Like I'm seeking that a lot more. And it's like once I have the education or there's things that I that I know or I'm finding out, mm-hmm. then it has a huge impact on the art that I'm making. Yeah. Cause it's like I almost feel like it's my ammo. You know? Oh wow. <laughs> um yeah, like that's what I called it. Uh, like when I made the I made the series of like monotypes with the veils printed over their faces, mm. I didn't get that until I started reading um Souls of Black Folk by W. E. B. Du Bois, uh-huh. and then like uh like the first couple of pages, I got whatever I needed to make that whole series, mm. um, because it affected me like that. Like, um, yeah, a lot of people ask me like, what's my process, and that's the beginning. I have to be impacted or affected by something. And I'm just showing you a visualization of either how I feel about it or I'm just trying to educate you on it. Um, mm. That, yeah. Do you ever see yourself doing like public artwork, like murals or like public sculptures, stuff like that? I, I can see myself doing it. I, I see myself doing it because it's like a community effort. Mm. Um, I just, I don't see myself doing a mural of something that has a I, I probably have to explain it. you know how there's there's paintings that have like a deep and underlying meaning yeah i wouldn't put something like that on a mural uh-huh. like whatever i do i would do it because of a community effort um something easier to grasp yeah it has to be something that people just you know uh, like like a message that you just like instantly trying to get people to get um that that's that's the only way i would do that i don't know i just feel like when that happens, it's like my paintings more so become uh, illustrations. Uh-huh. I don't want them that easy, easily, uh, you know, found out. Yeah. Like it takes, there's something that it takes away from. 
I don't know if we like touched on it already, but like I wanted to know like what motivates you when it comes to doing art. I feel like we don't see it, but there's actually a lot of people watching us. Uh-huh. Uh people that you probably don't even know about. You know, mm. um like not to get all spiritual or anything, but it is is like you don't know like the huge impact or effect that you can have on someone later on with what you're doing today because a piece that you make today just because it's not getting recognition or it's not touching people right now doesn't mean it's not going to touch anyone tomorrow you know Mm -hmm. um but you you don't necessarily make it with the intent of like changing like millions of people you know as long as i'm heard from one person my my cousin he's uh I, i guess he's getting into photography now i don't know whether i had something to do with that but he did tell me he looks up to me so mm. it's just like even that one person you know like but i don't know it's it's, it's dope it's like i don't, I don't feel like ah, i had this conversation with uh one of my other friends like it's like i feel like when i'm painting i'm not just painting for myself yeah i feel like i'm painting for a whole nation because uh-huh. it's like as a black person if one of us make it we all make it. Mm. you know what i'm saying um and she brought up an interesting uh an interesting comment she was like you know like that is a good thing but uh it's i also like i also hate that you guys have to paint with responsibility because right now it's like it's like if you're not painting things about what's happening right now or to help yeah it matter it feels weird you know yeah. you feel like you you're not really like people accuse you of ignoring uh, it or exactly yeah um yeah so it's like although i'm motivated to keep creating you know i want to change lives i want to influence a bunch of people educate people it's like there's some other things that i have wanted to paint mm-hmm. but i feel like these other things are more important the the comment that she made it just really made me think it's like damn it's like uh can I paint other things? Like, yeah. you know, like like I can, but it's just like the feeling that you get, like. Like, do you feel like you're being forced on in this position to, that you have to now on think, like t- touch on these things on your latest artworks? No, and, and that's the thing. No one's, no one's forcing me to paint these things. Um, like, I, I want to paint these things, I do. Um, and, I, and I can paint other things. It's just, it's just like the feeling that I'm getting. So like the conclusion that I came up with, like after like having that discussion with a friend of mine, it was like, fuck it, I'll do both. Yeah. Like I want to help. I these are things that I've been painting about. I'm gonna continue to do that. Mm. But if there's some other things that I want to paint that don't have anything to do with it. I can paint that too. I'm an artist. Uh, I can do that. Um, I'm still doing my part. You know. So, yeah. And that that's what everything that I want to do. Um, whether it be clothes, movies, paintings. You just you just mentioned like clothes, which is in a way is like more accessible mm-hmm. to you know the the public. Like mm-hmm. something I've I've been like questioning myself and uh asking others like how accessible do you want your art to be? I think this this goes like kinda hand in hand with like the mural thing, like I don't mind people having access to my art, but it depends on the piece. Because uh-huh. if it's something that I want people to really, really stop and look at, mm. I probably won't put it on clothes. Yeah. Because fashion, fashion has a way of desensitizing the words that that you know that that are printed on on like if if the if the message isn't direct. Or if it isn't, uh, I feel like easy, easily readable. Like in my opinion, then I feel like that strong underlying message that you wanted to portray. I don't, I don't think people are gonna get that. Mm. You know, I would never put like one of my paintings on like clothes. Um, mm. Like one of my, take that back. I wouldn't put one of my deeply thought out paintings on clothes. Yeah, because I feel like you know. Even if it looks nice, people are like, oh, no, I, I like it because it's dope. You know, like they may not even know about it, you know, 
Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's just like that um they dropped that uh Tremaine did Denim Series on Instagram. Yeah. Um I think it was dope. The the collab he did with Levi's. There were certain pieces that I didn't really like. Um, but I did like the the prints that he did. He did a collaboration with uh Kara Walker. Yeah. With the uh the cotton design. Yeah. I thought the pants were dope. Um and I, I saw there was like a lot of there were like a lot of non PLC or white people who wanted the pieces. Mm-hmm. I just couldn't help but think like, do they want it? You know, because of the the, the meaning that's behind it too. Um, that you know the message he's trying to portray. Mm. Or do they just want it because it's dope? You know. Yeah. And they're allowed to buy it, you know, just because they think it's dope. But that that's what I'm getting at. You know, I'm like, should I waste the energy on putting this much? effort into like a deep meaning when people are just gonna want it because it's dope yeah or just because it looks good you know what i'm saying exactly so it's it's that type of thing uh, so like does it matter to you like who who's like who's the person buying your art i would i would like people who i i'm going to make sure there's definitely people of color who own my artwork you know yeah um be, uh because they there's a message there's a message that in my artwork that i want everyone to get you know Mm -hmm. Uh, it doesn't just focus on people of color um the message is either towards people of color or towards everyone you know um but going back to what you were saying it's like there there are there are white people who really do care yeah like i I can't necessarily say uh put them all in one group exactly exactly i know there are some white people who really do care and they want to support yeah um as long as they understand the message that i have behind it you know then i think i'm completely fine with it i i i am completely fine with it um the art world is very very weird it's a very weird place because i feel like even if let's say i didn't want any white people to own a piece and a collector decided to buy my piece he and he or she was black and then they sold it to a white person I can't mm. take it back. Yeah. Because it's not my property anymore. Like after they bought it, you know, after they sold it, they can do that. Mm. So it's, I feel like once once it's out of your hands, that's it. You know, uh, you just hope that they get where you're coming from. Mm. And not all the time do people of color get what fine art is about, uh, you know, like a message in a fine art piece, you know? Mm. Um. Cause I don't know. I feel like within the black community, there's definitely a lot of supporting, you know, uh, fam- there's definitely a lot of, a lot of people out there that are supporting the artists and their family. Yeah. Um, but I also feel like what's really common is like, when you tell someone that you're trying to become an artist or this is what you're trying to do, they automatically assume it's a side hustle or they, or they feel like, you know, you know what else are you gonna do you know like it's they, they don't take it serious exactly i wanted to like I, I guess like growing up like we've always saw like i guess like the image or like the idea of like the struggling artist mm-hmm. which is like you know an artist that barely has enough to you know i don't know like buy food or pay rent true always working on their art 24 7. it's like very they're like very depressed, very sad most of the time. Uh, it's, I guess it's like a stereotype of what an artist should be. Do you feel like that is like a like a true stereotype, or should that always be the case? I think that is a myth because I feel like a lot of it has to do with how people romanticize the life of an artist. Mm. They think once we start painting, um, we just go sell the painting for thousands and millions of dollars. Mm. This, this is not how it works like you can't just be an artist and expect to be successful as an artist yeah that's a lie you have to be an artist slash business person you know you have to know about you have to, you gotta know how to market your work um you gotta know how to protect your work uh be able to socialize exactly yeah. there, there's certain there's a certain way you gotta move you can't just be you can't just think you you're just going to be a really great artist 
and not speak to a bunch of people and not make connections and expect to be successful. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, because I feel like that's how a lot of people fall into that, you know, like, but I feel like if you're making those connections, you're you're constantly and consistently making an effort to build your brand. Because I hate to say it, but your name is a brand as an artist. Yeah. Um, then I feel like you'll be just fine. You may not be as big as the people in in you know museums right off the bat, but you can definitely get there. You know, because consistency. You you always reap the benefits of consistency. You know, um, your hard work. Uh, but I, I feel like that's a myth. Like just like the myth of like, like obviously like there's a lot of people in debt, you know, because of college in general. Um, but they, oh, I've been listening to this um to this guy on YouTube, Matt Diavella. He's like one of my favorite YouTubers. Mm. And he he just like uh like a lot of his YouTube his YouTube channel really just revolves around like helping people and like things that you can do to benefit your life, like self-growth, um, you know what I'm saying? And he basically went in talking about his life and how he uh, was in debt, like $90,000 in debt, and he paid it off in like a year and a half. Mm. And so it's like, you got people who are still paying that and they're in their 40s and 50s. So it's like, it's just like, how do you go about tackling, you know, that debt? Uh, like, are you are you making certain business moves to to tackle that? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. I I I feel like it's a myth. I feel like the, the starving artist thing. They, while there are starving artists, it doesn't have to be that way. You know, you may fall into hard times, but th- there's there's I feel like there's a mindset of a starving artist. You know, yeah. Because as long as you're as long as you're working hard at building your brand um or building your career it won't always be that way yeah you know so yeah i feel i feel like that's a um a myth that you'll never have to be afraid of as long as you working hard at what you do you know mm-hmm. um, yeah do you feel like um like you, you do believe like taking care of yourself is very important first mm-hmm. and foremost before anything yep no. Financially and physically and mentally. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Who was I who was I listening to? It might have wasn't it Oh, it was Les Brown. I think it was. Um motivational speaker that I like to listen to. Um I think he was saying like like there's people who believe like like in the Western world that you know like uh our our mind is the what did he say it was like we think our brain pretty much like controls like a lot of what we do Mm -hmm. but in the eastern world i believe um because i don't want to misquote him but i I believe it was in the eastern world they believe that our stomach actually controls a lot of what we do because when you eat the right foods you think better you feel better your body it fights off things you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. um it's definitely like an interesting way to look at things you know yeah i never heard of that oh. yeah because it's like if, if if your body is doing well you know what i'm saying like your mindset is better you're able to take on things a lot you know a lot easier so i don't know i feel like it's a, it's a combination of both really mm-hmm. um but i definitely i feel all of that because there's a lot of things that i had to get the hang of and learn <clears throat> like I'm like, why do I feel so unmotivated? You know, sometimes yeah. it was just because I didn't have any energy. Like, what did I eat? Or mm. like this tea thing that I've been on. If I feel like I don't have a lot of energy, I can drink tea. Um, I I can eat, I can eat food. You know, get energy or whatever. But make sure I eat something light. Yeah. If I eat something too heavy. I'm sluggish. I don't want to paint. Um, so yeah, it's interesting you said that because a lot of what I consume right now it actually does have to do with like my productivity. Do you feel like art stresses you out or is overwhelming at times? Like you got to take a break. Yeah, yeah. 
What's like the longest break that you chose to take? I have taken a break before, but not voluntarily. Like I've never said I'm taking a break. Yeah. Because I I haven't felt that I've done enough in a in a long period of time to be able to say that yet. Mm -hmm. Me me personally, I feel like until I've like accomplished a certain number of things in a certain amount of time. I don't feel like I need like a I'm I'm not gonna voluntarily be like I deserve this break. Yeah. Um I don't think I've ever seen you. Like mm -hmm. you're always doing art. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like uh after a while it's like yeah, that's the thing. I don't voluntarily take breaks, mm -hmm. but they kind of just happen because yeah. I'm so burnt out. Yeah, you know? Um, it's it's like a mental thing going on. I'm like, damn, what happened? Like ideas, like I can't I can't get in. You know, mm -hmm. it's like I've used up all the juice. Like, like I'll be like, it'll be a day where I'm like, okay, I'm doing this, this, and this. And I wake up, nothing happens. I'm like, okay, I'm going in the room and I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. and I still just can't. Like I, it's like tug of war, like trying to get myself to do it. Like, so you try to force yourself. On, on those days where I'm feeling that now, I'm just like, I need a break. Yeah. Because I'm like, I've worked these other days. You know, I've worked on stuff these other days. Before, I was trying to force myself. But then I'm like, I, break days really are important. Mm -hmm. um, try to get as much as you can out of each day. But it's like, eventually, you, you do need a break. Because mm -hmm. I, like I... Wait, what do you call it? Artistic muscle? It, mm -hmm. it is a muscle, you know? Yeah. You burn it out, you ain't got nothing for a while. Do you feel like you have to explain your artwork often to people? I feel like my artwork, personally, people, people under, people, at the very least, they understand the feeling that I wanted them to feel, mm -hmm. you know? Like, they may not understand the backstory, the complete message, but they'll at least feel what's going on. Um, like that's the best way to describe it, because like, like that's something that I've been struggling with a lot. Like every artist that I meet um, or that I look up to, I'm like, um, you know, like I'm like, what was your intent with this? Like, do you want them to know what you're talking about? Because a lot of times it's like, sometimes we don't even know like what we're looking at. You know, yeah. Until the artist explains it, um, so I think that's that's really stressful. I'm like, you know, do they have to know what I'm talking about? Like, is it my responsibility to do this? Um, I think my favorite pieces are those ones where it falls right in between. Mm -hmm. um, it's not so complex that the vast majority does not know what the hell is going on. Yeah, but it's not so superficial or cliche that it becomes kitsch art or an illustration mm -hmm. and illustrations can be powerful too but they're not as i don't feel like uh they're as profound as fine art mm -hmm. uh, what's like the um average amount of time that you spend on a piece like do you take months on a piece or could you get one done like in a few days honestly uh, this quarantine has taught me I, I can, I can. Uh, I realize I'm on and off. I try to give myself deadlines and things like that. Yeah, during this quarantine, I definitely say like my productivity has gotten a lot better. Because before it's like the paintings would be like, like it, it's more like on and off. Like I mm. would never consistently work on it each day. But now I'm like, okay, I start this this day. I want to finish this by this time. Um, and thankfully, before the last semester ended in our school, that's one thing that I feel like that was just super helpful. Um, my painting professor, he noticed every time I painted, I put a lot of, uh, it's almost like I put a lot of intent on each stroke or like the way I did each object that I painted when you do that you put a lot of time into each thing yeah. sometimes you got to just paint you know what I'm saying like there's times to just be really focused on one thing 
uh, and just be really focused on certain sections in the painting. Um, but really, you really just got to paint. And you know what I'm saying? Just just let it flow. Mm -hmm. um, and that was a really reoccurring theme for me last semester. Freedom and control. Like it's still, it's still reoccurring. I think we were just talking about it, like deadlines and stuff. Like something I've been struggling with is like, I guess like self-discipline. Mm -hmm. like disciplining myself to like get stuff done and just like time management in general like like what are things that you do to like discipline yourself to do lists like, yeah. like that little book that i that i write down um but it isn't until this quarantine happened that i feel like i was really really like something really interesting happened like like i use those to do lists mm -hmm. um but i think it's just like the mindset that you put yourself in. Like today I'm going to wake up. I'm going to do this, this, and this. Um, like before this, like, nah, it was during this quarantine. You know when all that crap happened and we had to, did you have online classes? Yeah. It was annoying as hell. Exactly. And I had this one class. Oh my God. I just felt, I felt like, oh my God. I was like, I was so close to just dropping the class. But I was really? like, I don't feel like doing it again. And I, ha I really had to force myself to do it. And I couldn't start any of my other artwork because I was dealing with the school stuff. Yeah. Um. So I felt deprived of what I love to do for a long time. Wow. Um. Because it was just like straight essays, you know what I'm saying? Um. Well, it was more like a lecture-based class. Yeah, it was that you had to read a lot, you know what I'm saying? And, and it sucked. It sucked. And once I finally got finished with that, it was mm. like I was just <laughs> just went crazy <laughs> <laughs> uh, with everything, bro. Like I was like, I'm paying you know everything. Like whatever I'm gonna do, I'm doing that shit. And that's why <clears throat> that's why during quarantine at first, I wasn't super pressed or super in a rush about like going back to work for someone else mm. i was like right now i want to see what i can do with this drive and it was crazy i started getting commissions i started doing that uh people started reaching out to me and yeah i think that had a lot to do with the mindset that i have now mm. it's like a catapult for you know and now i'm back working with someone else but it's like i didn't realize how much time i still had even though i was working for other people but if i wake up early enough I can get stuff done before I go in for it, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so yeah, th those to-do lists and the mindset that I have now, um, it's just like training yourself to do that, you know? Cause some days you will really get lazy. Like I, I, <laughs> certain, certain days, certain weeks, I just, I'm just like, I don't want to do it. I just, yeah. you know, this is it's one of those things, but. Definitely for me to do lists and not electronic to do lists. Uh -huh. <laughs> I have to write it down. I don't know what it is, but it's like once I write it down, I can't get it off my mind. You know, so I recommend that for any artist. You don't you don't gotta make a whole to do list. You know, but if you write it down on a sheet of paper. That's another thing. That's why I like that. that that's why I like that that book is pocket size. Mm. And I carry it around with me, so it's like. It's almost like no excuse. It's like you know what you had to do all day is in your back pocket. So yeah. Um, and and if I don't get it done, you know that's that's okay too. You know it's just like I made an effort to try to get some of the things done. You know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's my little method <laughs> method to my madness. Do you um like you were just saying? Uh, sometimes like school gets in the way, like mm. all, all these assignments. Like, do you feel like? I guess this is two questions. Like, do you mm -hmm. feel like school gets in the way? And the second question is like, do you feel like like art school or just school in general gets like a bad rep? Well, the first question, does school get in the way? I feel like it really depends on the person because some people already have what they need to go where they want to go. You mm -hmm. know, um, they don't want to be in, in galleries and and all of these other things, you know, uh, mm -hmm. they have the technical abilities that they need to create commissions for people. So at that point, I feel like, yeah, school is in the way for them because 
to start your career. You know, you don't need this. You don't need a sheet of paper to tell you. You know, to start reaching out to people and make connections. Um, but I feel like fine artists, like unless you're uh, at an academy or an atelier, um, or you, you know, you consistently get in online classes. School is definitely helping you out. It can definitely be annoying, you know, because you gotta go somewhere at a certain time of day every time. Um, but it, it's just like you know, education in general. It's like that term I used earlier. It's ammo, because once they show me how to do something that I didn't know before, I'm using it um, in my piece. Mm. You know, this is this is another way I can say how I feel. Um, and, it, and it can be looked at as just as sophisticated as the rest of these other paintings that they have hanging up in galleries and museums. Mm. So if I didn't know, you know, uh, where am I going with that? Nah, I'm just leaving it at that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I just feel like it's ammo. It really yeah. It's like you, you get more ammo because uh, you either get it in school or out of school. Yeah. You know, um, but um. I didn't, I didn't, I personally didn't just go to school for education. Um, in, in our terms today, I kind of just went for clout too. Because mm. I do want to be in galleries and things like that. And nowadays, it really is politics. You can't just expect to just get into a gallery um, by just showing up with a nice portfolio. Yeah, You can be a really good painter. But if they don't know you and they didn't hear about you... <laughs> please forget it you yeah. know um i feel like uh school I, I guess for the listener like we're talking more so like college or like post high school education mm -hmm. but like i feel like some people they they see us college as like just school quote unquote like they don't see college as like or like art colleges as like a facility where there's professors you could make connections with mm -hmm. a facility that you could use you know the equipment the space for exactly. uh because i'm pretty sure that's how we both see it you exactly. know just taking advantage of those spaces and the people that are in them yeah and that, that goes back to the question you asked earlier about the starving artists if you're in college you know uh let's say you had a bunch of assignments to do you know our art our, our student uh you got them done you have all this extra time in a studio. You got all this space, materials and equipment. Go and make you some money. You know what I'm saying? Not necessarily saying you're just making a piece just to make some money, but, you know, screen printing, for instance. Our screen printing lab was, was open, uh, you know, majority of the time, Monday through Friday, Monday through Saturday. So it's like, go in there, print you some shirts, advertise them, start a business, mm -hmm. you know? Um sculpt sculptors i know that that was like a really big thing i heard from a lot of them i didn't know like a lot of sculpting majors but having the space to make their pieces you know you can't make this uh 10 foot size you know clay sculpture inside your apartment so you know mm -hmm. um so there, there's pros and cons to it it really is and you can start your career while you're in school definitely I'm definitely for that, you know. Do you talk a lot to your professors, like outside of class? Um, I feel like I could. Mm. Um, the ones, no, I take that back. There, there, there's a couple that I talk to, but not from the college that I'm at now. Um, the one you were previously? Yeah. Okay. Miss Jan, back from the last one. She mm. was cool. She is cool. Um, my first, uh, professor at this new college I'm at, I say she was like my favorite so far because she kind of just broke that, like this, like this concept of like everything has to mean something kind of thing. And from then on, like, she's probably going to be the, the one that I reach out, uh -huh. reach out to like while I'm here. Um, haven't reached out to her yet, but I'm getting to it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Are there like um the school the college that you that you go to, like are there more prof are there more so professors that are, they just see themselves as professors or are there 
professors that see themselves as like equal or you like you, they're approachable i guess um what you say are there professors that just see themselves as professors or like i feel like um like there's teachers out there that they see themselves as a teacher and you're just a student oh. like they're not like like and, and that's just it you know like it's just you're in them in the classroom with them for that moment and that's it but like there's some professors that I met that, you know, they're just cool people. And like, yeah. I can actually see myself being friends with them outside of school. I feel that. Like, Thankfully, I have, um, the professors that I had, they were actually mad chill. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there's a really good thing that's happening right now. Our generation, we created Rate My Professor. I don't know how long it's been <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah. But that, that site alone has so much power. It does, yeah. Because it's like, <laughs> it's like, one, number one, it helps students register classes faster. Yeah. Because already you like, I'm getting this, I'm getting a good class, I'm getting the better class. I'm not <laughs> going with this. <laughs> one star professor. <laughs> exactly. Because yeah. the thing is, you see multiple reviews about the, you know, the fun stuff that they do. It's like, <laughs> it's like nah, it, not today, not today. So, um, you know, you get a warning, you mm -hmm. get a heads up. Um, and um, those those professors that aren't that cool, most of us just lead a class there. That, that, mm -hmm. uh, my, my first uh, semester, I ended up <laughs> the first day, like the list on everyone's faces was like, yeah, I'm not coming back. Uh, I have a professor like that. You canceled the class before? Mm hmm Oh. Wow. I had to swap it out for, uh, I had to. It was just, the class was cool. Um, it's like one of those, like, we actually, we had to interview people in the class. We had to oh. go and seek out someone from, a, someone from another culture. Um, you had to interview them. And I think it was about, like, basically just, like, talking about your differences, you know? Um, so it, it was a dope class, like yeah, that sounds like fun. Yeah, but it was like she just made it super boring, and like the like her, I don't, the teacher itself, the professor, just like you said, like I'm a professor, you're a student, so that kind of thing, especially in art, art school, nah, mm. it's not gonna fly. Um, <laughs> and yeah, most of us ended up leaving the class. You know, when they end up with like three or four people, and the class is canceled. They they seem like <laughs> I feel like the only way that works where you can just be one of those crappy teachers is if you're still really good. Because there's some teachers out there that are really good at teaching, but they're assholes. Yeah. You know? Um, it's it's some out there. And I, I would still take the class. Um, because I know it would still help me help better me, like as an artist. Um, but if if you're not good <laughs> Nah, I'm sorry. Do you have any questions you want to ask? There's one that I did think about, okay? Like like with clothing, right? When you make a piece that has like a message in it, like a weight, and it's a dope piece, are you worried that people are buying it just because it's dope? Like, would you, would you, would you care, you know? Mm. Like, is that something that would bother you? Like, I remember, like, Supreme, like, they released, like, a t-shirt for, and, like, the all the, all the proceeds was going to, like, people that were affected by COVID. Mm -hmm. um, but then afterwards, it was, you know, it's a box logo. So, like, all the hype beasts are going after it. And afterwards, it it's on, like, reselling websites for $400. So, I guess people like, like, like that, they, they had to have bought it. So, like, they that money did go to the charity and like you were saying like with your own artwork like they could do whatever they want afterwards it's true i guess it's just like just like the idea that they're profiting off of something that was originally for something good like doesn't sit well i guess yeah. with either one of us but we were really at the end of the day i mean they bought it so yeah they could do whatever the hell they want with it so. The money's going towards something. It's, it's going some going towards something positive. So. Yeah. 
Yeah, it was recently I was thinking of um like you know I've been like my little watercolor paintings, like the series that I'm working on. I basically just been painting black men. Um I've been trying to paint what officers might see when they look at black men. Uh -huh. Because like I seen this one interview by um I love this interview. Uh it's it's James Baldwin. And I forget the other guy. It's like a like a white bald guy. I forget his name. Um but my favorite part in the interview, he's like like this 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 view, like 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 I don't know what white people see when when they when they see me, but it isn't me. Mm -hmm. You know, they're like there's a psychological thing that's going on. And it, it has to do, I feel like it has to do with like the enlightenment and like what black people were portrayed to be, you know? Um, and this like ongoing ideology that's just affected generations. Me. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm like, when they look at black men, because cause just, just think like, for someone to just kill a person and not feel, you know, remorse. Right. Yeah. It's like maybe they didn't feel like they was killing another human. Yeah. Like they, there had to be this, you know, that's what makes us different from animals. Like I feel like this level of empathy that we have for each other. Conscience. Exactly. Yeah. So then just shoot and not feel that. It's like maybe you don't even see me as one of one of you, you know? Yeah. Um, so I've just been painting what they what what's going on mentally i've been painting like animals in front of black men um that's where the watercolor comes into play i didn't realize that um you get like a like this transparency i think that's dope um and i'll put like a target in front of it and i was sitting there taking that concept and maybe putting it on clothes mm -hmm. but i felt like i don't know i feel like i would get ridiculed for that and then i'm like maybe rightly so because it's like if i put that on that and let's let's say it blows up or let's say it actually do so about people buy it because you know people tar targets on clothing it's, it's aesthetically pleasing i'm not gonna lie like it, mm. it looks cool like just targets itself but when you put you know this other stuff that i'm talking about in front of it imagine someone buying a painted jacket or a painted tote bag of a black man with a target on his head just because it's dope you know yeah. it's like what am i seeing you know almost like you're i guess idolizing it yeah in it's, a way. It's, it's like i'm the seriousness that was behind it it's it's not there anymore. yeah this is just a dope bag you know mm -hmm. so that that's something that i've been definitely thinking about um there's this um you remember ish right yeah you know the guy he does the podcast with chris mm -hmm. he's like he's like our age but he i think like last year it was like fashion week or whatever and so he modeled for this brand and the brand like it was all over the news and stuff like they just had a bunch of like um like you know this the, the sweatshirts that have like the university or like the school's name like on that arch mm -hmm. and so they had schools like columbine uh oh that's like the only name i could think of but all these other schools that were school shootings have happened mm -hmm. so you know there's like columbine sandy hook other schools and there were actual like bullet holes through the shirts and so i guess the that brand whatever their intention was was to put a a spotlight on those school shootings you know oh. um but like on the news and stuff you know some people they got that message and then other people they thought that they were idolizing you know that you yeah. know that's kind of reminded me of what you were just saying yeah that's interesting it's like it's such a touchy situation it's like your intent is good because mm -hmm. there's you'd be surprised there's some people that don't even know what's happening right now you know yeah and it's stuff like that that can really help them see like this is happening you know people are dying um it's like your intent is good but this the you know the way things are right now and then you know we got cancel culture so it's like you say your own thing and you kind of done yeah. <laughs> for the rest of your life yeah because <laughs> you can try to come out with something else and they're like nah i remember that time <laughs> we got received <laughs> real like hold up 
So yeah, I think just it's really weird times. Like you you can't you you can't just I think it just proves that to an extent you can't just make whatever you want to make. I mean mm-hmm. you can make it but <laughs> you can't just make it public, you know? Yeah. Um so so there are like moments where you have to like restrict yourself. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Definitely. And and that goes to show just how powerful art is. Yeah. And there's people who think uh, But is it how powerful art is or how powerful cancel culture is? Both both. Mm-hmm. Both. Maybe it isn't the art, maybe it is maybe it's the the ideals people have on art, you know. Um because I mean, at the end of the day, it's it's just a print on a bag, or it's just a print on a shirt. Um, it's just a, you know, it's just a painting. Uh, but the impact that that it has on people, like that's that's real. Like the feeling that people have behind it. And if you just make it, you know, w- without any idea of how it's going to affect them, you're going to get some backlash. You know. Mm. Um, I can't say I'm really for cancel culture, but I feel like it's really an effect of like, like it's a result of like people not getting what they deserve. Yeah. You know, so now people are like, nah, like that that's it. Like one and done, you know. Do you feel like that should be the case though? Like just one and done? Or like can some people make mistakes? I mean, they're human. They they're gonna make mistakes. I feel mm. like we should give them that room to, not necessarily the room to make mistakes because people have done some wild stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not gonna be like, hey, you can just go ahead and <laughs> do this, you know, kill someone, and we can just, it's okay. It was a mistake. Mm. Like, like, nah, you that's some serious shit. Yeah. Um. But the whole cancel culture is like, like, okay, if if there. If there was no cancel culture, I feel like one of the pros of that would be these people who have made these really messed up mistakes, like killing or raping or robbing. It's like when these people change their life or turn their lives around, they could affect these other people who are about to make the same mistake. Mm. You know? Do you know who Daryl Davis is? Sounds familiar. Who is um he he did an interview with Joe Rogan. He's uh he's a black man who attends KKK rallies and oh, he heard of this. And he's um he doesn't like to take credit for what he does, but he's he basically sits down with KKK members and asks them, you know, like like why do you see me like this? Why why that? And and eventually those members uh come to the realization that you know that they're wrong and and such and so eventually they just leave the clan they be they just change who they are and, and see that that's something that that was just really really on my mind like when all of this stuff started happening like like that thought process that what he's doing is like he's he's really he's making you know he's making a change um, yeah. although it's small um because it's like like you know when the protests and things like that started happening and you know on social media the uh you know the messages and things like that people were putting out and i think it needed to happen you know Mm -hmm. people are like you know we need change we need justice for this and people were like if i don't see my friends posting about this you cut off you know yeah all of my white friends not poc i don't see anything y'all cut off but then i'm like what if they do want to make change but they they don't feel like either just posting about it is doing something because th- this was something that one of my friends said, you know, because I, I, I was about to cut her off, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I called her up. I was like, damn, I really fuck with you. I need to know. <laughs> I know you got black friends. <laughs> so tell me what's up, you know. Um, and she was like, I'm glad you decided to call me instead of just, you know, because it changed my thought process behind it, too. She was like, she felt like just reposting and posting things, it wasn't doing much. And I told her, it, it still does, you know, because every little bit <clears throat> counts. But she was like, I want to actually do something, you know? Yeah. So her approach um, wasn't just donating, which she's done. It was having those uncomfortable conversations with people in her friend group who are non-POC, 
mm. or or people in her family. She's she's white. Um, and I was like, damn, okay. It was like my my reality of how they may be thinking is different from the way it actually is. Cause when you're a white person surrounded by a bunch of other white people who uh may have different mindsets about what's going on, it's definitely gonna make you think like how am I gonna go about telling them or talking with them about what's going on? You know what I'm saying? Either way, you know, it should be done, but it's like, it's that kind of thing, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, And she felt like just posting these things, they'll just look at it and probably keep swiping. Yeah. Um, So I realized talking with her, actually, I don't know, I I, I got something there. Like, I showed her every little bit counts, you know, and I got something from it too. So it's like, if only these conversations could, happen on like a broader spectrum i've I've also heard though like on like on instagram and such like people saying that it shouldn't be my job to educate you like you should be doing that yourself do you agree with that or like you you wouldn't mind educating people i definitely get where people coming from with that because if they literally did there's just so much stuff out there's just so many resources so many books so Mm. many videos uh, so much proof of this stuff where it's like the questions that they come at you with it's like there's all of this but you expect this from one person you know um, mm. so there's a frustration that happens when it's like there's all of this but you just want me to give it to you um, so I, I get where they're coming from with that um, but I also feel like it's something that's going to happen right now because they grew up in a household <clears throat> where this stuff wasn't told to them, you know? Um, so I'm, me personally, I don't think I'm going to tell them every single thing, um, just enough to get, get them started. Like, you need to be actively in this or reading this. Um, Cause I think that that's, that's what it's gonna take to really, really, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, like this is what, th- this is where you can get more research in this. Or this is where you can be educated on this. But it, it's, it's, it's weird because like I'm thinking about it and it's like, in a way it's like, are they too lazy to just, you know, seek out these things? Because um, I don't know, that, that's the thing. I, I feel like we should, we should have these conversations so you get a better understanding of their thought process. Yeah. Because it's one thing to read it on Google, but it's another thing to hear from the black person themselves. Mm. Um, like being pulled over by a cop, you know, um, it's one thing to hear from, you know, see on Google, like, you know, all of these people saying these things, but it's another thing when one of your friends are like, this shit happens every other week, you know? Yeah. Um, so it's, those conversations are necessary. Face-to-face interaction is definitely a lot more powerful than the cell phone or computer, you know? Um, so while I do agree with that, like they do need to do some some research and education, um, I think those conversations need to happen. Um, mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's all good, you know yeah. what I'm saying? It was it was good. Yeah, I enjoyed. Um, oh, we went I enjoyed doing this with you. Likewise, Sorry. it was a vibe. Yeah. You Thank you, Corey. That. Appreciate you for coming. Thank you for um, having me. Yeah, if you want, we could probably do another one in the future. I I definitely want to do another one. Uh, I just want to do another one in a while so I see the difference. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because like I said, I feel like I'm constantly changing. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know when you would like to have another one. I just made sure it's a gap. Mm-hmm. I guess I'll see you in 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thank you, Corey, for coming. Thank you um, for having me. I hope you guys uh, that are listening or watching. <laughs> I forgot you still recording. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, I know this is like a uh, rough uh, recording. My apologies. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, definitely follow Corey by his art. Do you want to say your Instagram or do you want to say it? Uh, you can put it in the comment section. It's fine. It's- <laughs> Uh, Corey, no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Corey lives. Underscore, yeah. underscore, 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 underscore. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, it was a vibe. And you also have a website. I do. I've started started painting on clothing. Mm-hmm. You sold out most of it, though, right? Mm-hmm. That's good. Damn. It was just weird. Yeah. It sold out really fast, or? Faster than I thought it would, you know? Uh-huh. Um, a lot of the pants haven't, like, sold that fast. But I feel like it, it has to do with, like, my presentation of it, because I was kind of going for a certain lighting. I'm starting to see, like, lighting really, really helps. You yeah. Know? Um, so, you know, you live and you learn. Are you just posting clothing up there, or are you going to post, like, artwork up there as well? Um, I do want to paint on other stuff. Like, I got this skate deck that one of my coworkers gave me. Oh, nice. So, probably seeing that and see what I can do with it. It's, like, a lot of stuff that I've been wanting to try before I go back to school. Mm. Uh, yeah, I think that's what's going to be this whole year. I just want to just learn how to do other stuff, you know? Because that, <laughs> that other art page, like, a couple of people have been like asking me like is it a brand but i don't i don't really consider it a brand i feel like that really to me is just like a just a place where i could practice doing the things that i wanted to learn how to do yeah because I've, I've really been getting into like denim like um i i want to like you know how people like repatch and re- reconstruct things um like unclothed yeah, yeah 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 like they'll um They'll reconstruct like a denim pair of pants or a jean jacket or like that thing that needles did. Did you see what they did with the with the flannels? Yeah, yeah they're known for that. I'm like, damn, I would love to learn how to do that. But I think it's so cool is like you're helping the environment, you know? Mm. Like you're not. I didn't you, think of that. Yeah. Yeah, you're not making more clothes to put more uh, smoke in the atmosphere. Mm. You know, you're repurposing and stuff. So that's dope. Um, <laughs> so I'm like, shit. Um, that, um, I, I've always wanted to learn how to airbrush and my dad forgot. So, um, so yeah, it's like, I mean, it's cool if it like, if, if it sells out or if it don't, like it's whatever right now, I would like it to, I would like to have a decent following, you feel me? Mm. Um, cause eventually I would like to just support myself with something like that so that I could just focus on school. I'm working yeah. right now, so we'll see where it goes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you, guys. See y'all soon. <laughs> See Until the next episode.